Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor and I'm going eel fishing tonight and my preparation starts with a lovely plate of my favourite food, beans on toast covered in brown sauce. Mm. Well, I've had my feed for the night, now I'm getting ready something for the eels to eat. There's my bucket, just a, a small bucket I'm taking with me tonight and I've got some dead maggots in there. I'll show you a close up in a, in a while. Uh, got them in there. I've got some predator ground bait mix. And I've also got some of this ground bait mixer, which you mix 50-50 with water from the venue. So I'll do that when I get there. It smells horrible, which is just what you want for eels really, isn't it? So I'll mix all that up. When I get to the water's edge, obviously I'll put it in. I'm not by the water's edge now. Well, I am, but it's my garden pond. I'm not fishing there. And I'm just getting the stuff ready before I leave for the canal. I'm now at the water's edge. I'm on the canal. And there's my bucket of goo. I've just added some canal water. And I've added my ground bait mixer and I'm getting that all sorted now. As I said earlier in the video, it absolutely smells. But I think that if I were an eel, this would be like a buffet. <laughs> and so uh, hopefully tonight, because I'm here all night, I'm going to film the first session. There will be a number of sessions that I'm going to do for eels this summer. And that'll all be in this one angling journal entry. But this particular part of the entry, the video, will feature the one session. So, hopefully I'll have something to show for the, uh, the camera. Albeit at night, it's not, uh, it's not like I've got a camera crew behind me and all lights and stuff to capture everything. But as I so often say, you know, there's a lot of tips and uh, inspiration to be had along the way. And that's what I want to try and communicate through my angling journal. Right, that's all sorted. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? That's ready to put out now. And uh, then I'll uh, talk you through some more of the session. I've got both rods out now. I'll write in the article a little bit about the rigs and all that sort of thing that I'm uh, fishing with. But I am fishing worm on both hooks to uh, start with, on both rods to start with. It's now quite dark, well into dusk now, and it's a warm night, warm muggy night, so ideal for eels. I'm actually fishing an area that I have fished before and I have caught, but this particular spot I haven't. It's one of those little tight, uncomfortable swims that I often get myself in but I've been able to bed in and one of the important um, things about fishing these days is you, your car being safe and no doubt as I've been talking and you will hear um, cars quite close I'm, I'm fairly close to a to a, a road bridge and I can actually see my car from here so that's a that's a big thing isn't it that your car is safe and you know that it's going to be uh, going to be okay so it's the waiting game now but as always I'm hopeful I've got the light on the camcorder now so that's made me appear brighter but while I'm waiting for that first eel to take the worm let me introduce my guest for the week Dean Aston. I try to keep my angling journals very species specific as much as possible and so Dean is my guest this week. Dean fishes um, particularly during the spring and the summer pretty much focused on eels and so I asked Dean how did he get into them in the first place. Over to you Dean. The reason why I got into eel fishing is that I was lucky enough to fish with my um, angling hero uh, like John Sidley. Uh, I wrote to John uh, about pike fishing, took me pike fishing and then he, John being John Sidley, talked about eel fishing and he took me uh, to Westwood Park and um, since then I've, I've been up really on eels. Don't catch many but um, there's just something about eels that just fascinates me. Fascinates me, you know, the whole life story about them and it's just incredible really. That's why I'm into eels. 
I am here for the night as I've already said and I've got a bed chair although I won't be uh, won't be sleeping really just somewhere for me to to stretch out it's a very very uncomfortable swim a bed chair is at an angle like that and even with adjusting legs and what have you the ground's too soft it's a uh, it's it's a no opa really but that's just typical of the sort of places that uh, that I fish just poured me a cup of tea and I'm going to enjoy that and then those bite alarms will start we're into the early hours and I've just had a, had a roach. Although you can't see from the camera, it is now beginning to get light. Just the one roach so far and I thought I would use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the eel. It's an amazing creature. It begins life in the Sargasso Sea, which is way down off the Caribbean. And the Gulf Stream carries these tiny little eels, these little elvers, up into the uh, regions, um, including the British Isles, of course. And from there, these eels make their way into our rivers. So where I am, for example, now, I'm on the Staffs Worcestershire Canal, these tiny little elvers start way down in the Sargasso Sea swept up by the Gulf Stream into the Bristol Channel up the River Severn into the River Stour at Stourport work the way up there and then as they work the way into the uh, smaller rivers and the smaller streams and the brooks they then find the way into pools and canals and lakes and they will stay there and that's when they begin to grow. So we're not talking about these tiny eels. In fact, if you fish the lower seven on a regular basis with maggot uh, or even meat during the summer, you'll know that, that those, those pieces of meat will sometimes pick up an eel and they'll certainly become uh, chewed away and eroded during the uh, evening sessions that you have. Well, those eels, they then move up and they find their way into the canals and the lakes and the ponds and that's where they start to take on size. So the eels that I'm fishing for, such as this session now, the bigger eels, the ones that will stay, and then some of them will go back to breed, but of course, some of them will stay. They just become landlocked and uh, for some years, and that's where they, they grow to the size. Very elusive. <laughs> if there's ever a fish that we know nothing about, in terms of uh, how many is in the water, what size they grow to, it's the eel. They can turn up anywhere. And that's probably the exciting thing about them. They're the last fish that we can really categorize. Like sometimes these uh, carp lakes, people know the names of the fish, what weight they come out, all those sort of details. You just don't know that about eels. They can literally be anywhere. And with so few anglers specifically targeting them, then it really is an unknown quantity and I think it's that which attracts so many people to the very specialized focus of targeting specimen eels but of course in the big scheme of things not many anglers in terms of a percentage do target eels but I've been doing that I don't do it as much as I I really want to so many other fish that I do fish for I'm a genuine all-rounder but I have to have at least one session uh, during the, the summer, or should I say at least one article during the summer, and this is the one that you've, uh, that you've checked out now, for this year anyway. And you can tell that we're eating first light. A perch. A worm in the canal, guaranteed to catch a perch, isn't it? And of course, you can see from the, uh, from the screen as well, light is now definitely starting to pick up. It's important to say as well regarding the eel because of the serious decline that the species has encountered in recent years if we catch one whether by design or not it's important that we return it that's a really important point that I want to make
I hope you've enjoyed the video. No eels this time, but with two more sessions to come, read how I get on in my angling journal article. Details will be on the screen shortly. And finally, I recently asked on my Facebook page for people to send me photographs of them with fish. And so I'm going to see this video out with some of those photographs. And in fact, this is going to become a, a regular feature on my videos. So something to look forward to in the future. Mm -hmm.